That was Bria the artist. She had a vibe. I ain't gonna lie. She did. I like the second one. Yeah, it, it was a movement. Right. Little had that Erica Badu kind of situation. Now that second one put me in a good trance for sure. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great Shout out to did you see shout out to Erica Badu? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what up. That's it was. Shout out to yeah, shout out to Erica Badu. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right, well, BC, welcome to the Ride Along or Rough Rider Radio. We appreciate you being here. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What's going on with you? First of all, I got I, oh, I got to first of all, I just want, you know, I said this when you came home, but welcome home. That's first and foremost because it's always good to see a brother out the slam. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you was in, yeah. it was wow. I saw like mad like posts like on Facebook because it was like the status. I was like, there's always one nigga from every hood that walk around with the headphones right there. <laughs> yeah. Mad free dinner, free dinner, free dinner, free dinner, free dinner. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So it, it's good to definitely see that. Like, you know what I'm saying? You had the love. Like, you know what I mean? People was waiting, you know what I'm saying, for you to come out. Like, I remember like uh, the day I found out you was coming home. I had told Hensley, I was like, yeah, he about to put the town in a frenzy. I was saying, yo, he can tell you, I was about to say, I was saying this the entire time, and then it just so happened that right after my studio session, it was yours, and I was in there listening to the new joint she came up with, I was like, yeah, he about to lock this down. <laughs> <laughs> he about to lock this down, for sure, for sure. Nah, that nigga's low-key going crazy, and I ain't gonna front, nigga. <laughs> nah, but uh, to, to uh, rewind a little bit, uh, tell me, yeah, like she said, uh, who was Dana before the music? Did you have, like, any hobbies, like, before you started rapping and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Huge from not the music, you know I mean? I was, like, some badass kid. Dang, dang. That was your hobby? Yeah, I was <laughs> rapping, though. I always rapped, though. Right, always, right. I always, always rapped. Always, but, you know, I was, ever since I remember. Yeah, I was I was when I wasn't rapping, I was doing bad shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the uh, the BC in your name stands for Bleed Culture. Right. Shout out to uh, Peace Girl, you know, that's my dog, you know what I'm saying, ever since I was a young man. Yeah, shout out to the whole crew. Okay. Man, well, how did that? Uh, how did that come about? Was that something that was? Uh, yo, honestly, yo, you could ask all of us that, and we honestly really can just, just zoom in. Well, let me let me hear yours. Was it I, was it founded I, before you, or was you there nah, when it happened? We all it was all a, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Sean is the one who like put the words, the culture together. Right. But all of us played a part in making this shit. I think he's the only one who say, "All right, we're gonna call it this," but we were all been doing what we were doing. So the people that don't know you, because a lot of people don't know you, I know the guys in here know you, but tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from. So the I'm from Yonkers. Okay. I'm 26. Right. Got two beautiful children. That's, That's a blessing. Mm-hmm. I just rap all day, every day. That's all you do. Pretty much. I got merch, <laughs> so I make t-shirts and things like that. It's okay. my friend Nikki. What's the piece, Nikki? What's the piece, Nikki? I'm from Nikki. R.I.P. Queen. Yeah, I like the merchandise too. I'm definitely yeah. gonna get something for sure. Like, name of the merch. It's on fire. I don't really have name Bleak Ocean right now. Yeah, Bleak Ocean, that's all you need. Bleak like, that name now is mad unique know, for itself. Let them know, you know what I'm saying? Now, yeah, that's a fact. You know but just that name within itself is mad unique. So, anytime you like, that's one of one. Like, if I'm not mistaken, like, you can't find no other Bleak culture. Like, you know what I mean? They got so, the like, painting in the square with Sean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Word. Shout out to that. You know, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm trying, man. Uh. How far do you think your progression came since you've been, you know what I'm saying, from the time you was in to the time you was out? Like, was you, like, writing raps every day, still, like, sharpening your skills? Right, Did you, well, uh... It's been, like, a couple of years since I wrote a rap on paper. So, when I went to jail, I was sticking to that. I'm not going to get anything. So, I was doing it, but I would have to, like, get away. Because I was in a media. Like, it's a maximum facility in a media facility. In a media facility, you don't have no cell. Yeah, like a dorm with 50 other people. Yeah. So you can't get away from nobody. But you have to try to find, like, you have to go in the bathroom store or something and find your own somebody to get in the camera. So that's what I do. You see, I was always practicing music, but I practice every day. That's what I do. Well, how long were you, how long were you locked down? I, I did three years. Three years? Two and a half. Did you, I know it changed you. Did it change, did it change your writing, like, since before you went in, like, in 47, before you went in compared to now? And a lot of people thought I was going to come home with a bunch of jail raps. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I may touch on the topic, but that's not something I want to speak about or be reminded of, so, like, I'm not really Yo, and, songs for that. Huh? And shout out to, like, people like you, like, that do stuff like that, rappers that go in 
and is able to like rap around that concept and not mention it because nine times out of ten when you rapping about something you're going to rap about what you're going through in the environment and then when you lock down to something like that that's all your mind space is so that's that's pretty impressive that glorifying i ain't glorifying that shit that shit is corny yeah word seriously yeah it's so sure it is so you had your uh your own run-ins with uh you know we had a conversation but you could tell about it on the mic you had your own little running with uh why you had uh oh yeah why yeah well i met why personally in 2016 something i believe my friend my friend's mother is close with him why with rough riders yeah, yeah okay okay i guess i think he was putting together a rough riders reunion or something right 2017 called, yeah he called her to come get some tickets whatever and she told him about me she came to Locust and like, yo, you need to go to school right now. Can I tell why you rap? So I ran down there. And I was like, yo, and she told me, yo, rap for me. And I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not doing that. I can rap for you. I said, I can rap for you, but I'm sure you can find like 20 other people that can do that. True. Or I can put on my phone and play some real songs because I'm sure you can't find like 10 people that can do that. And he jacked in, we sang his car and he played some music and we sang his numbers. And after that, I don't know. I was stopping by this studio every single day after that. And I called him about two, three times, but I really couldn't. And it just, it wasn't. What did you say? Did you like it? Like, I liked the music. Yeah. You know, and actually, I came back to the studio one day after that, and I actually did rap for him at the stairs over there. And he was like, yo, I like it. Keep going. And then it just went there. So, I don't know. Now, your family have a deep-rooted history in hip-hop, period. Uh, your dad, Jamarco, yeah. Jay Bob? Tell me, tell me a little bit about him. Margo J. Bob Miller is Magic Rogers' cousin. Right. Mm-hmm. Margo was friends with Kiss and them in high school. Right. Everybody knows the story of Magic Rogers going to D-Block City and everything like that, but nobody knows that my father was going to be in Magic City in the first place. So that's how the whole thing started. You know. And I, but I don't want to try to make my pop seem like a foul dude, but he didn't raise me. It's just what it is. Right, I don't. Right. I didn't meet him until I was about twelve. Okay. And then we didn't build a relationship until I was about twenty-three. So, that being said, I didn't know that side of the family. Growing up, I didn't know I was related to Magic Rogers. Okay, I get But it. I always wanted to make music though. So in my mind, it's like it's kind of ripping for me, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just running the bloodline. Yeah. Because yeah. right. I always wonder why I couldn't get away from the music, and then I found out that oh, it makes sense now. What was your thought process when you like found all that out? Because that's that's like you know like. You know, that that can happen with anybody. You know, somebody's peoples gave their music to somebody that this is happening. But that was your pops. Yeah, none of that really settled into me until I was actually moving, until I moved into my aunt house and I was seeing Mary's mother in my face every day. And I'm looking at pictures, I'm like, oh, wow, this is really, oh, this is really, really my family. Okay. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know. I mean, did it motivate you or did you think, you know, why I mean, did you I tell was, me? Did you feel some sort of way? Like, I how, why did I know? I was from the music regardless from like, right. I've been telling my friends since I was like 10 years old, I'm a Bob Bugatti. So, like, they know where I'm at with it mentally forever. But, yeah, that kind of was like, you know, I think I got to keep it going because my cousin can't make music forever. And sure. once she retires, and once, you know, D Block retires and all you guys are finished, what's going to happen? Are y'all going to let Yonkers die or is somebody going to pick it up? Of course I don't we, know. We right here. You this know, is so Yonkers like, right here. You know, yeah, the radio. Right. We need artists too, though. But we don't only need artists, we need cameramen too. You know, everybody wants to be the rapper, but the rappers need people also. Right, rappers need engineers, producers. You know, so yeah. everybody wants to be the front line, I get it, but it's really not that serious. And then everybody wants to be a rapper, but what are you going to do for Yonkers? Because if y'all not looking out there, that shit looks crazy. Yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. So, and for as, to, as big for Yonkers to be, you know, because Yonkers definitely has its history. Like, you, know, you can't, like, sweep that under the rug. You know, like you said, like, Yonkers need a lot more people now, and it's... Only rappers, like honestly, like, and and, and that's coming I'm not from mad at that. I mean, yourself. granted, everybody do what you got. Like I said, say you guys do obtain the fame, you know, like what are you gonna do? Are y'all guys in it for a bust down, rolling in a bad bitch, or are y'all gonna come back to your town to do something? Because the people before us didn't do that. My cousin and ex and you know the guys that are still in Yonkers every day. Mm-hmm. Yonkers to be made the same. <laughs> they still ain't doing nothing for the town either. I got two daughters. I wish I could raise them here, but I can't. Because there's nothing here for them. Facts. Nah, that's, that's really shit. Well, we but, gotta make those. We gotta make changes like that. You know, the kids are the future, but if they ain't got the future, then what's gonna happen? Right. right. Let's get into some music. So we got um, this song, "All Facts" and "Better Rap." We got a few more songs, but we're gonna get into these two first. So tell us about those songs. 
But All Facts is the first take project of my mixtape I dropped in 2017, Head Hell High. It's still available on all streaming services. All platforms. All platforms. Um, that's, yeah, that's, the, that's like the intro. And it actually has the skit with Jada telling the story about my father giving the CD or whatever. So, yeah. Okay, and then we're going to get into Better Rap. Right? Better Rap. I, rec- I wrote Better Rap when I came home, like 5 in the morning. Two nights before I went to the studio to record it, so that's the newest one I got. And I joined us some heat. <laughs> some Alright, well let's heat. get into it. This is BC Dana on the ride along Rough Riders Radio. Let me know when you get to the last. Right. Right. Alongside Rough Riders Legend. Yeah. 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 Drag on, Lil' Wah, and the Young Riders and more. Then hit us up on the ride along at yahoo.com and get your music heard. Now. First time, you know this is the worst time For all you niggas with your dirt lines I'm putting the 